<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited um, to join for you to join me, to join us. Um, I'm here with Brooks McCarty, executive chef of Love Life, which is where actually sitting in this incredible space, this restaurant right here in Los Angeles right now. And um, we you're in for a treat. You are in for a massive treat. I've been so excited to do this interview with you, Brooks. Um, this restaurant is my dream restaurant. And so much so that a little while ago, I did a dinner here with some of my VIP coaching clients. And they all came. And if any of you are on today, hello. And we did this beautiful dinner. And I'm going to be honest with you, Brooks, as I was just, just saying to you just now, this was the only restaurant that I could find as a nutritionist and as I have got all these boxes to check, you know, to, for, for health and, and, and weight release and everything that really checked all the boxes. It was the only restaurant. So it was such a joy for me to find somewhere that I could bring my precious clients to that was like, you can have anything. You can literally pick anything off the menu and it completely aligns with, you know, what I've been teaching you. So we're here and uh, hi, Rachel, and feel free to get in, leave comments. We're going to do a little Q&A at the end because at your disposal, you have one of the most incredible, talented executive chefs in the U.S. at the moment, particularly in the field of, of healthy, really healthy, not just healthy in name, um, plant-based uh, nutrition. And it's a really, you know, growing movement. We're seeing a lot of wonderful plant-based restaurants all over the world and all over every city in America. But, but a plant-based movement um, or and restaurant, which Brooks will talk to you a little bit more about what love life is, that is, it goes next level. And it's a whole different level of health. And you're going to learn so much today from this conversation that we're going to have. So super excited. Brooks, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for having me at the restaurant and for, you know, for creating these dishes that not only, uh, Brooks, for my clients, that serve them so well for their health and you know all most of my clients are on a weight loss journey so you know it, it fits so beautifully with that and for their health but everything was so delicious we were just ooing and ahhing oh my gosh and we were eating nachos we had pizzas we had cheat we had all these beautiful foods that were so so delicious yeah um, oh, yes. So Rachel's saying how exciting she can't wait to dine at Love Life. So um, we're going to be getting into this. And so, Brooks, let's start. Let's just put this in context and let's go back a little bit. So as a chef, you have been a chef for many, many years. And First, I'm interested in what brought you into the plant, what attracted you to plant-based cuisine? Uh, honestly, I was, you know, starting, I grew up standard American diet, kind of started to dive into organic and eat more vegetables and whatnot. And then um, back in, it must have been 2011-ish, uh, I watched the documentary Forks Over Knives. Yeah and switch from standard American diet to fully plant-based overnight. Wow, you were an early adopter. Yeah. Because that's that's a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. How, and you lost a lot of weight, correct? I did, yeah. So back in high school, I was like 235 pounds. I was a football player, but also just like, yeah, I was not in the best shape after, you know, like leaving the sports world. And um, yeah, just kind of, uh, yeah, switching plant-based, it, it made it a lot easier for Wait to just kind of come off to melt off yeah. <laughs> basically yeah, for sure. um so then you now you you've worked in the, in the plant-based space as a chef for many years we were just chatting before it's really interesting because brooks was telling me that for a while he was the executive chef at it was neiman marcus wasn't it yes. so some of you neiman marcus if you know like very very high end obviously you know a department store that you would go and get your designer whatever and so what was 
that like trying to bring uh, it, because everything that I talk about Brooks is really about a lot everything aligning with values mm -hmm. and 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 what your values are so what was that experience like so I mean I was brought in there to kind of bring a more plant focused plant forward um you know seasonal organic healthy um menu kind of to what they had to offer there this is at the neiman marcus in beverly hills and uh, a lot of people were super excited about it and receptive to it but i would say the majority of the people there just wanted their you know regular old standard american diet fare and so kind of you know it was a journey of you know kind of balancing back and forth and um at the end of the day, yeah, like when I left there, it was I just wasn't happy with what I was serving anymore. And yeah. Um, then, yeah. yeah, it's funny, isn't it? When you I think on our journeys that we go on and certainly you and I are on that similar journey towards health and and. Um, you know, in a sort of bigger picture as it starts aligning up with your values for your health, for the environment, for everything, for serving people at, to the highest level. When you are not in an environment or not able to do that, it's it there's it just feels a little glitchy. There's something that feels a little off. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely um it's very rewarding and fulfilling when you're doing something that's in line in alignment with your personal beliefs and values for yeah. sure. Yeah. Which brings you or brought you to I know there was there were other steps in between, but let's talk about love life. So we are, as I said, we're in love life and love life is more than just a restaurant or a, it's called Love Life Cafe. There's, I'll have you talk about this, but I, I really would love for the audience to, and you are, yeah, please ask questions, but it's, it's much more than just a restaurant. So what brought you here? And will you talk to, tell everybody a little bit about what Love Life is? Yeah, so pretty much, like I said, I, my last job was in even Marcus and you know, towards then there I was, um, kind of burnt out and done with it. So I was going to take a break from the kitchen for a while. Uh, I got reached out to about an opportunity to work for a budding um, new plant-based uh, company that was not just a restaurant, but also, um, you know, as a, as a bigger concept, we have essentially three pillars. So Nourish, which is this restaurant, is the, the food side of things. And then we also have Thrive, which is our fitness and wellness side of things, and then uh, Heal, which is our uh, lifestyle medicine practice. So it's kind of like all-encompassing total body wellness. Um, wow, you know. I I just love that, yeah. and of course that is you know that that's very so aligned with me as well because it's a holistic thing. It's not just the food; it's the diagnostics. It's looking at what's really going on with you, mm -hmm. and then how do you heal the root causes, and how do you address that both from you know, the medical perspective, um, integrative perspective, fitness, and of course, food. And so will you tell everybody a little, because not everybody who's watching is based in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So you're, I know you're based in Austin, yes. um, Texas. So if, it, you know, and there are people watching all over, you know, from, from America. So tell, tell us a little bit more. So here, as, as far as I understand it, in this love life and this gorgeous restaurant, you can see here, look, can you see all the, well, my head's in the way, actually. But, <laughs> um, you can see behind us. Um, this is a huge, it's beautiful. If you could see it, it's the most gorgeous, gorgeous space. And then across the way, there's, um, I think there's going to be opening the Thrive and the, um, you know, the different sort of aspects of this full concept and it's very very cutting edge this is the future of food it is the future of medicine it is the future of wellness and i believe that love life is right on the arrow of that so how does that where can people find love life in even different areas of the country uh so this is uh like so we have a sister restaurant in Miami, which is Love Life Cafe. Uh, that's in the the Wynwood area. area. Love that area. Um, and so, yeah, great, wonderful restaurant. A little bit different food than what we're doing here, um, but still healthy, plant based. Um, you know, we're all part of the same vision. Uh, and then, yeah, eventually uh, across the way in the same space, we have um, Heal and Thrive that will be opening at some point. Um, just kind of working through some construction stuff on that and then uh really our first flagship location will be in el segundo which will be opening next summer and that'll be kind of everything under one roof um well so that'll launch all together we'll have so you know first day you walk in you can 
have a meal, go get a workout in, go see a doctor, get labs done, anything that you need um, as far as, you know, like getting it's so your it's fantastic can you imagine and i want you to let me know in the comments hi carolyn from uh, i think it's alabama i've got my glasses on hi and Ed edmund so can you imagine walking in and this really is this is my this is my um crystal ball this is the way of the future if can you imagine walking in now we're seeing in so many places um you know all that so many uh, so much unhealthy stuff is being taken away that this is my positive this is my optimism my optimistic part of me to make way for you know can you imagine walking into somewhere that in one place you can get everything done and you can be so inspired you could get your labs done can you imagine you can find out what your ldl cholesterol your apob you can find out if you're at risk what you're at risk for what has to happen you can get nutritional advice you can then go oh in the same thing i'm going to plan a workout i'm going to do some of that and then i'm going to top it off by having a, some beautiful food all in one place amazing it's such an incredible concept so let's talk food let's really get into some food talk now yeah. because brooks um is obviously a chef and i will say i was saying to brooks before that as a cook myself board certified nutritionist and cook what i have found and if any of my clients are watching you will i know that you have experienced this firsthand is that brooks you can get any rest a recipe book. It can be plant-based, it can be vegan, it can be whatever it wants to be. You can go to any restaurant and there are many, many, many healthy plant-based restaurants, even here in, uh, even in Los Angeles. And you can throw in tons of oil. You can throw in tons of salt. You can throw in tons of sugar. And of course, we all know the healthy sugars, right? Like, oh, it's coconut sugar, it's maple, you know, and all of those, which, you know, but you can throw in, and I think particularly the oil and salt thing, and you can make something taste kind of really hyper palatable and, you know, client. And I know for myself that the biggest challenge for me and my clients has been learning to cook in a way without all these ingredients, a ton of oil, a ton of salt, and all the ingredients that absolutely, and I just need to say this as a nutritionist, that are deleterious for your health journey, particularly if you're over a certain age that lead to pre-diabetes, type two diabetes, metabolic disorders, heart disease, and the list goes on. So easier said than done, right? But you cook for hundreds of people and create menus. So what has been the most challenging part of that for you uh i would say overall just yeah you you hit it on the head um you know being able to add a bunch of fat and salt to things makes the flavor pop right so fat carries flavor salt enhances flavor uh so trying to figure out how to still make delicious food without that has been the biggest challenge it's like you don't have the typical tools that any chef would to to make that happen um so really and you know as far as like we have a, a whole large portion of our menu that's oil free and you know figuring out how to roast and saute vegetables without oil but still you know create flavor create texture and um yeah still make dish, d delicious dishes that are still enjoyable okay so stop right there because we're going to yeah. put we're going to pin i want to just double click on this exact thing that you've just said so absolutely right so when you're my clients and for those of you who are watching aren't my client, we eat we do cook for the most part with without um added oil and without oils and that it takes um a skill um to be able to do that and so um i have so much respect for you um as as a as, a, as an executive chef, Brooks, because I I just, I, I, I've tasted a lot of these foods and we're gonna bring some of the dishes in in a minute. We're gonna show you some of these dishes. And I just know that it is nothing, it is nothing short of, it takes a whole different skill level. So I have such respect for you. So with the thing for everybody who's watching at home, let's just take something as simple as seemingly simple as roasting vegetables we're going into the fall now we've got all our gorgeous fall root vegetables how do how do people at home and how do you as a chef how do we roast vegetables without using anyone can get a baking sheet tray you know 
throw on clogs of olive oil, tons of salt, throw it in the oven. We know how that goes. It tastes delicious. Mm -hmm. There's this health food restaurant in, in LA, actually, and they do Brussels sprouts. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, their Brussels sprouts are amazing. Roasted Brussels sprouts. And it's literally, I know there's so much oil in this dish. So how do you do it? Uh, honestly, super flavorful vegetable stock. So toss the vegetable in a really flavorful vegetable stock. Um, I like using coconut aminos to add some salinity, but yes. not have, you know, be su being super handed heavy with salt and then herbs and spices. It just depends on the flavor profile you're going for, but th those are the key components. A, a tasty vegetable broth, something to add some salinity like coconut aminos without um, adding a ton of salt and herbs and spices. Would you, is that, do you have a preference of coconut aminos over a low sodium tamari or would you use it interchangeably? I would use it interchangeably, but from everything that I've found out there, the coconut aminos is always lower in sodium. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, so it really just depends on your own personal, um, you know, health yeah, yeah. situation. Yes. Um, for sure. So buy coconut aminos. You can get it in a bottle, a spray bottle. It's a really, really great substitute for uh, using tons of salt. And now with, uh, you mentioned a veggie broth. Do you, I'm, I, well, do you make your own broths for the restaurants? Yes. Of course they yes. do. Silly question. Um, can you give us any tips for making a really, um, a, a vegetable broth at home that has some taste and umami to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much our standard recipe here, a uh, bunch of onion, uh, celery, carrot, fennel. Um, we use some coriander seed. It's pretty much just that, some bay leaves uh, and water. And we just let it simmer for a very long time, let it reduce, let it extract all of the, the flavor from those vegetables. It also helps if you um, blitz the vegetables in a Roboku or food processor first to really kind of break it down and and let it extract all that flavor. Oh, what a great idea. And yeah. then you would strain it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great idea. So we're gonna get some, do you wanna see some food from the restaurant? We're gonna bring some dishes in at a moment. So, you know, you can actually have a look at some of these dishes and then Brooks is going to be able to re sort of talk us through them. So we'll bring those in. But in the meantime, if anybody has any questions to ask Brooks, this is such an amazing opportunity for you to to ask questions. Um, hey, we got uh, LP in Atlanta. We've got Alabama. Um, we've, uh, let me just see. And so let's see, do we have any questions? If you have any questions, just get them in the chat right now. And then we can ask, we can ask Brooks. I'm going to ask you, oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, sending love. Angela. Oh, Angela. Angela, I'm so glad that you're on. So Angela is actually, she's a client of mine, and she is actually a cookbook writer. And um, so this is, Angela, definitely ask Brooks some questions, because you'll probably have some really great questions to bring to the table, some more sort of detailed sort of chef to chef questions. So definitely pop any questions in here that you have. So in, in love life, what are some of your, what are some of your personal favorite dishes? We were talking a little bit about this before we came on with the interview. And I think what, one of the things that I love about love life, and I'm so excited that it's expanding so that so many of you can actually come here and experience this, is that it's almost a home away from home. You know, you can get delicious sort of bowls and Caesar salads and very comforting. I would say they're just nourishing foods, but nourishing foods with a little bit more of a sort of edge to it. So what are some of your you told me what you when you came to the restaurant yesterday, what did what were you craving? The Thai green curry. Um, definitely, I would say that's our signature dish here. Um, super flavorful, oil-free, low-sodium dish. Um, and yeah, it's just super nourishing and warming and delicious. Okay, we're going to get those in a second. Yeah, um, be in. I wanted to... Uh, oh, hello, Janet! She's here. Hi, Janet. So let I wanted to ask you um, about the about optimizing. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh my gosh. You're going to see these dishes in a minute. So I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, just before we look at these beautiful dishes about, so um, you mentioned, and I, I, what I understand about the menu here is that 
there is you call it optimizing and 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 is it like about 30 percent of the menu uh yeah it's about 30 percent on the menu um that we have the option to do that uh we have a couple of dishes here that we'll dive into that um in a second but essentially uh, we have a team of doctors and nutritionists that kind of set forth the um, nutritional standards that I had to follow through the recipe development process. Um, we work with a program called Menu Calc, where, you know, as I'm creating recipes, I'm entering ingredients to kind of figure out the ratio of fat and sodium and whatnot to, um, to kind of fit those parameters. Um, wow. So, yeah, that's kind of how that was all developed. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just by the way, if anybody, if anyone's just joined, um, and, and I know a lot of you have come a little bit later, I'm doing this live. I'm in Love Life. It is a restaurant, but it's also a concept that's that's expanding throughout America and I'm sure throughout the world. I love the name Love Life because it is about just loving life and feeling so amazing in your body that you can love life. And so I'm sitting here in Los Angeles, um, Love Life, where I hosted a dinner for some of my VIP clients um, a, a few, back in July, actually. And I'm here with the executive chef, Brooks McCarty, who is an absolute genius, genius chef, because um, Love Life is not just plant-based. Love Life takes plant-based to a whole new level. As Brooks just said, he has to work within the parameters of working with nutritional guidelines, nutri tr nutritionists, there's nutritionists on the board who are very like, here are the guidelines, here's the sodium, here's the fat content, here's how the dishes need to have, there's optimization even beyond that, which is very unique to love life, such as the way that certain foods are cooked to optimize the nutrients in those dishes. We can get into that in a little bit. We've got some beautiful dishes that we're about to show you, but I just wanted, I think there was a question. So um, this is, let's just see here. Okay. So um, let me just get rid of that so we can see. So here's a question, right? Over to you. All right. So how can I jazz up brown rice so that my children will learn to like it? Great uh, question. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're cool with, you know, at, if you want to add some ingredients to it, I, I think, you know, what kid doesn't love uh, fried rice that you could totally do oil free. You could add some onion, some garlic, some ginger, uh, some coconut aminos, maybe some green onion, some peas, carrots, uh, and Ooh. just make it a really, you know, healthy oil free vegetable fried fried rice without, yeah. without any oil. Great, great answer. And great question. I think that's uh, Matthew, because, you know, here's the thing. And uh, well done. A uh, huge props to you for 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 actually wanting to cook for your children in this way, because I think unlike probably Brooks and certainly unlike me, I wasn't raised with <laughs> this kind of food at all. And so for you to want to be doing this and asking those questions, you will change the the trajectory of your kid's life. If you can figure out how to make a beautiful fried rice, as Brooks has just illustrated, then you're giving them the gift for the rest of their life. So what a great question. Thank you for that. Um, uh, let's just see. I want to see if there's any other questions. I don't think there are. So as we're showing you these dishes, I know that you have questions for the chef. So if you do, and it might be about anything, it might be, how can I flavor my food? How can I make, you know, if I have a sweet tooth, how can I assage my sweet tooth? How can I, so just, just feel free to ask those questions because, um, you know, that is, is going to be useful for you to have that right now. All right. So this is dish number one that I want to show you. And of course, the camera isn't really doing justice to this. Um, this is a beautiful beet tatar. And if you could see it in the in the light, it is the beet is obviously this beautiful ruby red color. And it is, you know, I I particularly love beets because of their um, they are really for your liver. I mean, uh, beets are, are so, they have enzymes in them, it's got better, it's just so good for your liver, for thinning your bile. If you can have your beets in a way that is super, super healthy and delicious. So will you talk us through this particular dish? Yeah, so this is our beet tartare, as you mentioned. Um, so the beets are roasted uh, in vegetable stock um, with, with some sliced citrus and thyme. Um, once they're roasted, they're roasted till they're soft. We peel them, dice them, 
um, and then it's tossed in some fig balsamic vinegar as well as some stone ground mustard um, and then it's topped with some diced avocado there's some pickled mustard seeds that's uh, micro bull's blood which is uh, micro beet greens on top and we serve it with some butter leaf lettuce as like a lettuce cup oh my gosh it is so delicious don't you just want to reach through the screen and the way that uh, brooks is describing it is so so delicious i love that what i what i love about that is you're talking about so many different flavors in there even talking about how once you've roasted the beet you're putting in a fig balsamic and a mustard so bringing that's where you are so genius and brilliant at pulling those things together all right oh this is so pretty all right this is the most good talk us through this dish what is it called and uh so this is our uh wild arugula and end of summer fruit salad um so uh there the base of the salad is a mix of little gem lettuce and wild arugula uh the dressing is a blackberry fig balsamic uh there are some sliced yellow peaches some blackberries uh avocado oh toasted God, quinoa some pickled golden raisins as well as some uh roasted beets in there as well oh my god so when you say toasted quinoa do you cook the quinoa boil it and then toast it exactly to make it a little crunchy yep mm -hmm. and do you toast it in a skillet or in the oven just in the oven yeah Ooh. There's a tip, right? To put in our salads. Yeah, nice little extra yeah. crunch back. And I think if people, so particularly if people aren't huge quinoa lovers, I'm always looking at ways to sort of love love quinoa. And the the texture is, is is so important. All right, now this that we're gonna I'm gonna show you right now. I think it's Brooke's favorite dish. It's certainly mine. And oh my gosh, oh! So this is. Let me see if I can tilt the camera a little bit here. This is the Thai vegetable, the Thai curry. So talk us through, I'll keep this here. So, right. Yeah, so um, the base is obviously the, the bright green sauce. That's our Thai green curry sauce. Uh, so essentially what we do is simmer some garlic, onion, ginger, galangal, lemongrass, uh, lime leaf, some Thai chili, a uh, little bit of coconut aminos and uh, some Thai green curry paste. We let that simmer and create a, a really uh, nice, delicious broth, um, which we then add some low fat coconut milk to and then puree it with uh, baby spinach that gives it that nice bright, bright, bright green color. Um, so that's the sauce. So that's where the majority of the flavor comes from. Underneath all these lovely vegetables on top, there is uh, some forbidden rice. Um, we have some roasted kabocha squash, uh, some gailon, which is uh, Chinese broccoli, uh, shemeji mushrooms. Um, we have some onion and garlic in there. And then tofu, yeah, marinated tofu that's marinated in coconut aminos. Um, and then it's topped with some micro cilantro, some Thai basil, and some mint leaves for nice fresh flavor. Oh my gosh. You need to have, I hope that's going to be the Love Life cookbook. I hope so too. <laughs> because seriously, did you, I mean, that that was just, a lot of that was just, there was so much that went into that. All the different flavors. It's really fl making, the broth is just what's so incredible. And you've packed so much in there. I just love a curry because, and I really encourage everybody to really, so I think there's a lot of people go, oh, curry, I don't really like that. But once you start tasting these flavors, your life is changed, literally changed. By a curry. Now we do have a couple of questions. Um, so let me just see here. Ah, is this a good right? Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, suggest a simple, tasty, oil-free uh, dressing. salad dressing. So uh, on this salad, um, kind of the base for that is, uh, as I mentioned, a fig-infused balsamic um, that we puree with uh, blackberries and a little bit of date. Um, and there's also a little bit of mustard in there as well to help kind of emulsify it. Um, I think that that's uh, 
definitely one of our our better um, like fruit based dressings. Uh, also, our tahini Caesar salad it is uh, oh, oil so free, um, so that there's a whole too many ingredients well, yes, to list to of that. that. Yes. But the base of it is tahini um, that's thinned out with some water. There's garlic, nutritional yeast, chickpea miso, black pepper, lemon juice, some vegan Worcestershire sauce. Um, I'm sure there's uh, capers. There's there's definitely other things that I'm missing in there, but um, that makes a nice, real uh, creamy dressing um, that still has that, you know, the fav flavorful fat content, but without any added oil. So that's another good wow. way to go as well. You know what? I'm going to be re-watching this live stream <laughs> and I'm going to be writing, <laughs> writing notes. I want to just be remembering all those ingredients. I think, uh, Brooks, one of the most challenging things for my clients is actually the, the dressings mm -hmm. because my clients, we all do oil-free dressings and that to finding all those, because you, it does require... Don't, I mean, I know you would know this, but what I think a lot of people find is when you take all that oil out um, and all that um, very heavy olive oil that is used so liberally, um, uh, and I think we're probably on the same page here, that you, have your, you want to have your healthy fats and you want to have a lot of healthy fats, mm -hmm. but have it, try and have it from the whole food, the yeah. olive and, and, and the avocado and whatnot and seeds rather than, uh, rather than you know, the, 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 the oil, which is just not going to help on your weight loss journey. But I found, Brooks, that in taking the oil out, it's, it's almost like you're lifting this heavy blanket of food because it just blankets it. It almost dulls it that then food becomes alive, but then you do need a lot of flavor. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, oil, you, you know, you're just adding calories um, that, you know, for anybody that's on a weight loss journey, uh, you don't need that really. Um, and the, as you mentioned, um, whole food based fats like avocado, um, I use, you know, light coconut milk as opposed to heavy coconut milk. Um, so just finding ways that you can still incorporate healthy whole food fats without um, yeah, yeah. The added oil is definitely the way to go. Absolutely. All right. So we're almost, um, we're almost done here. So here's a question, uh, guilty item question. Do you, would you like to answer that yeah, absolutely. question? Absolutely. Your grandma, uh, your grandma drank it too. Coca Cola, uh, good replacement for soda drinkers. Great um, question. My personal favorite, I, I would say I have two out there, but the one that I'm more uh, fond of that we actually have at the restaurant here is called Olipop. Oh, yes. It is a prebiotic soda. So they have a, a vintage cola version. They also have like a root beer and an orange soda version as well. And if I'm ever, I, it's been probably well over a decade since I've had a regular so soda, but um, if I'm ever craving that, uh, you know, sweet bubbliness, um, yeah, Olipop's my go-to. Yeah, yeah, what a great, Olipop, it's cool. What a great, great question. Yeah. Um, hi, Mary. All right, now, any other questions? Because we you, in, in, to speak now <laughs> or forever, uh, or, or forever, be silent just for this second here, and we can always come back and answer. You know, if you put questions in the chat, I can always come back and do my best to answer those questions. But um, Brooks, I want to just finish this by if what is your what is your hope? What is your hope and excitement and vision? For the future. Here you are, you've created these incredible menus and dishes for love life um, that are just off the charts. You've set this down. You can see this, this love life concept um, sort of burgeoning and growing. Where do you see yourself? What, what is your biggest passion? Uh, honestly, I'm just, I'm really big on health and wellness in general. I, you know, I exercise seven days a week. Um, you know, the Prior to my wife just having a baby recently, we would go to the gym How together. How old is the baby? She's two months. Oh, yeah, so. congratulations. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, just health and wellness in general. And I think that, you know, people taking charge of their health and, you know, like being more conscious of what they're putting into their bodies and, and making sure that they get enough exercise. I think that, you know, that's how we can live a long, healthy, happy life and enjoy it into our later years. And I think that for me personally, like that's always going to be like at the center of everything that I do. Um, and yeah, I think that love life is definitely, that's the goal of the whole company is to, you know, we're going to start here in LA and in Miami and, you know, like he'll um, help people in these 
cities heal and hopefully spread across the country and heal America, and mm. maybe the world someday. Yeah. Wow. What a, what an incredible uh, purpose in, in in life. And, um, you know, everybody who's watching, check out Love Life because you can go to the website. Uh, what What is the website that everybody can it's go to? It's love.life. So go to love.life and you know, follow them on Instagram, follow them on social media. And, you know, really... That my my parting piece, based on on what Brooke said, is you know you can be the hero in your health story, and 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 be that, and 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 with with um you know concepts like love life and with chefs, um thank God what you're doing you know like Brooks who just show us that and and I think this is so important Brooks because if it's not delicious, people aren't going to do it. Yep. You're not. If it's not delicious and if it's not nourishing and if it's not satisfying and if it's not enjoyable, it's another diet. And honestly, if you can't keep on doing something, then don't do it. Stop it. It's a waste of your time. It's a diet. This is a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle that your brilliance has uh, bringing in is just making it so do doable and delicious. So I thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And I'm so ex excited to see where you and love life as a concept um, goes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, and, um, you know, as I say, if you've come late, if you're watching the recording, which many of you will, just pop your questions. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, wherever, pop your questions in the chat and then I'll do my best to answer your questions. Or if it's a burning question for Brooks, I can always email it to him and then we can get his answer for you. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.